Hi everyone, how are you doing? My name is Rehan and uh, I am uh, with Dr. Mark. Are you a doctor? Yes. Oh, he's a doctor. Mark searched in there. Uh, when you become friends with someone, the challenge is you don't see any doctors or colors or age or whatever. You just remain friends. So um, I had the honor of staying with him in this phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal view space. Thank you for hosting me. It's, it's a privilege, Rehan. You're my brother and friend and fellow companion in life in the sense that we're trying to impact things beyond ourselves. We want to impact us first, of course, but together we have more together than a single strand cord, double strand stronger. And if we had three of us, who can break a three strand cord, right? So I had the pleasure of meeting Mark through another friend of mine called Audi and Audi introduced us for 15 minutes like we were supposed to actually meet for 15 minutes and then that ended up into the whole day and that ended up into another meeting and before and after that meeting he gave me this book and he said um, he gave me a book and he said Rehan we will meet again but you, before we do anything you must read my book I hate to read books so he gave me an audio book and uh, I actually read this, or heard this book, it's uh, six CDs, and um, I loved every part of it. I just Thank loved you. the book, personally speaking, and uh, it moved me. I think it's a very powerful work that you have done. Um, every book has its time in people's life, but I don't know why I didn't find it earlier, but I'm glad I did. So tell me about the book. What, how did it happen? And uh, what's first? Let's let's you know what's it all about. First of all, if anyone wants a book, they can download it for free. This is not a sales. Da -da 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 it wasn't possible only a month ago. Now it no, is. now it is mostly because of you. Yes. If I... you go to bridgesnow.com, mm. B R I D G E S, bridges N O W now. Dot com. You can see what we do in our work. You can click on resources. <coughs> and if you sign up to be part of this movement, if you want to, if you choose to, then you can get a free download of A Deadly Misunderstanding. It's yours I want it as a gift. But I'm not just going to give it to you. Like I didn't just give this to Rayon, I did, but he agreed to listen to it and agreed to work together. Now, what does that look like working together? Well, it, we'll see. God, inshallah, that means is, if God wills it, we'll see what happens together. Okay, your question is about the book. This book is a story of Mark Siljander's journey in life, spiritual and political journey. It's not telling you what to believe. It's not trying to convert you to any philosophy or religion. Absolutely not. What it is, is a testimony to the faithfulness of God, first of all. Secondly, it's a testimony how we can be narrow-minded and be led by the Spirit of God into a journey of expanding our mind wider. And as soon as we are willing to admit we don't know everything. And all that God has revealed in the holy books, we don't necessarily know them perfectly. Once we admit that, then our hearts and minds can open, and God will take us on an exciting journey. Um, so for, for, those, for my observation, everybody who uh, is doing interfaith work, who hates Christian or who hates Muslim, mm -hmm. they should read this book to understand what it's all about. Because you as a Christ, or as a follower of Jesus or in a former evangelical Christian, which means that a person who wants to force everybody to become into a Christian, um, have now said, no, you know, I'm not going to do that anymore. What does actually conversion mean? And mm -hmm. what does jihad actually mean? And what are all these words mean? Which I loved all about because you explained it. You knew and you showed how you actually had the hunger to understand it for yourself. 
And you don't call yourself an imam, you don't call yourself a, no. um, a scholar, you're just a no. student yourself. You want to learn and learn and learn, and you're sharing what you learn with the rest of the world. Jesus said, go make talib, <clears throat> students, <clears throat> disciples. And I feel I'm just a disciple, a student. The Aramaic word talib means just that. I want to learn. Teach me. And... I've learned things from you, Rayan. You're an amazing person with remarkable gifts. And I believe God has really called you to a work, a spiritual work, a people-to-people work that's probably unique in the world. I don't say that to many. I've met many people. Been, this is not a brag, but I've been to 145 countries. So many, many times over and over again. And I, I meet many fantastic... I've met the Dalai Lama. I've met Mother Teresa. I've met world leaders. And again, I'm not trying to, you know, make, make myself important, but I've met you, and you're a, 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 a wonderful find. I'm trying to put it in context. I've seen the world, seen lots of people. Your heart's very pure, very good. And may God bless you in your work and give you the power of his spirit. Uh, just for clarification, I still love Jesus. When you said I'm a former of this, former of that, I'm simply a, a man who decided that the notion of someone else having to convert to my religious club has no basis in the Bible, and moreover, Studying the Quran for 18 years, and this is just this, my view of it, the Quran doesn't say that either. So where do we get this idea that someone must convert from Islam to Christianity or from evangelicalism to Catholicism or from Shia to Sunni? This whole idea of converting is man-made. And I was in politics, as you know, I was a congressman, uh, the state, the federal level, local level, even a parliamentarian at the United Nations in New York. And I can tell you, people want power. They want to control you and manipulate. Best way to do that is to form tribes, clubs, groups, gangs, or whatever you want to call it. So this is, we're all involved in these religious clubs. And my view, Muhammad through the recitation of the Quran, Jesus in the Gospels, and even the Old Testament, the idea of an institutional religious club doesn't exist. And I challenge scholars, which I have in many, many Muslim countries, and Christian scholars in Christian universities in Oxford and and Edinburgh, and all over the United States as well. Please tell me where it is our job to convert anyone to any religious club. The word religion is never mentioned in the Old Testament once. Believe it or not, the word religion. The word religion is never mentioned by Jesus. The word religion in the Quran means deen. D-E-E-N in English, like Dean. And when I ask scholars, Islamic scholars, what does Dean mean? You know what they all tell me? It's a state of your faith, not a club. I said, wait a minute. You as an Islamic scholar telling me that the Dean of Islam, the religion of Islam is not a club you join, but rather it's the state of my submission, the state of my surrender, obedience to God. And they said, yes. Almost every scholar I've spoken with, not everyone, but the vast majority, Shia, Sunni, they've all said yes. So why do Christians, why do Muslims have in their mind, has he converted? And this is what this book talks about. It talks about the word convert, or to be converted, where it came from, and how it's been misused, misapplied by people who want to form little groups and tribe, religious tribes to pit them against each other 
Because in that competition, the leaders hold control. Hmm. What's the response from the Christian community when they read this book? Most <clears throat> Christians, when they read it, and really do read it, are shocked. They said, why haven't we been taught this, or why didn't we know this? I said, well, because most people cannot read or don't bother reading translations of the Gospels from Jesus' own language. What's the original language of the Quran, Rehan? Arabic. Why, why, was it, why is it in Arabic? Why Arabic? Because that's how it came. Correct. The angel Gabriel gave the Quran, the recitation to Muhammad, correct? In Arabic. So that's the original. So if one wants to know what was said closest, go to the original. Well, Jesus spoke what language, Rehan? I don't know. Aramaic. It's a cousin of Arabic, very similar words. Very similar to the Hebrew. Hebrew of the Old Testament, Aramaic of Jesus, and the Arabic of the Quran are all very similar ancient, what they call Semitic languages. Anyway, the point is Jesus spoke Aramaic. Some of us were inspired by one of my pastors, John Bucko of Three Rivers, Michigan, who is now 96 years old and smart and brilliant, still speaks excellent Aramaic, inspired yours truly, Mark Siljander, to learn some Aramaic and read the Bible from the Aramaic language. And it opened new doors of understanding notions of conversion, what it means to follow Jesus. And his words became alive. And then I found that the Aramaic words of Jesus were so similar to the Arabic of the Quran. I wondered, has anyone studied the similarities between the Aramaic language of Jesus in the Gospels and the Arabic of the Quran? And to my shock, I couldn't find anyone. So that what this book, A Deadly Misunderstanding, is about. It's, it's about... Uh, a, a journey learning Aramaic. Now let me mention, this is not a scholarly book. It's written simply. It's written like a novel. Uh, it's about traveling around the world. It's about nearly being shot and killed. It's, it's, I'm, I, even, I know I wrote it, but it, it's won in awards because it's very exciting in the sense that it's like, a, I say, an action novel. But in the process you learn. People are, it's a way of learning without having scholarly language. So it's very simple. It's pasita, as they say in Aramaic and Arabic. It's simple and straight. Pasita. Simple and straight. So thank you for asking about it. Um, thank you so much for, for writing this. It's, it's just phenomenal, is, is how I can put it. So everyone, um, you met the man who wrote the book. You can now listen to it online on YouTube. You can uh, now um, download it from his website, which is bridgesnow.org. Dot com. Uh, dot com. Uh, and uh, it's on YouTube. I have also worked on making it into a documentary. So we have done the first chapter, which is about jihad. The draft is complete, and it turned out very beautiful. I want to thank our team for doing that. And now we're going to do a third chapter, which is about, what's the third chapter about? Do you remember? Uh, is it about conversion? It's, uh, or is it a different? I don't know. Yeah. So there's another chapter, which we will do now as a documentary. And we're in the works to make it into a movie, maybe. And, you know, Mr. Sulchinder can be the superstar and handsome looking guy <laughs> which he is no, in Hollywood. You can be the superstar. Okay. I don't look like Mr. Sulchinder. I look like a 7-Eleven guy. <laughs> Hey, thank you, so, thank you so much for uh, You're funny. for for this book and for the work you've done and for the love which you have shown to me, to my family, to my world family, to the humanity. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you. Bye bye. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum.